In this video, I'm gonna talk about the secrets of the super air meter, all of the physics behind it, how it works. My name is Tyler Lay, and I'm a concrete crazy person. The super air meter test method is covered by Ashto TP118. You can find more information at superairmeter.com. To really learn about the details of the super air meter, we started out with these optically clear bottles. They were about three inches tall, about two inches wide, and about three quarters of an inch deep. We filled them up full of air and train cement paste. Above the cement paste, we added a little bit of water, and then we turned them over on their side. We hooked up a straw to them, which hooked up to a pump as well. We added some more water to it. And over time, the air bubbles would rise up out of the cement paste, and you would be able to see them on the surface of the glass. Here's the first picture, atmospheric pressure. So we start increasing the pressure. Increase it a little bit in the bubble, shift a little bit. We increase it a little bit more and some of these bubbles don't look happy anymore. They look non-spherical. Let's keep increasing the pressure. Increase it a little bit more. Some of them are very strange how they look, very, very oval shaped. Let's increase the pressure more and then more. Where are the bubbles going? They're getting smaller and then they're going away. Let's keep increasing the pressure. A little bit higher, a little bit higher. Where are the bubbles going? The small ones are dissolving. They're disappearing. But the big ones, they're still there. That's pretty important. Let's go back to atmospheric pressure. That's what the bubbles look like. As the pressure increases, we see these small bubbles dissolving. One big clue is in this pictures I'm showing you, these bubbles are all spread out. This is the Laplace-Young equation. It's pretty old. It explains lots of stuff in physics. This equation is pretty simple. It says that the pressure inside of a bubble, P, is a function of the fluid pressure around the bubble and the diameter of the bubble and the surface tension. And if you look at this equation, as the diameter gets smaller, what's gonna happen? Yup, the pressure's gonna go up. As diameter goes down, the pressure's gonna go up. Why does that happen? Because when the bubble curves, when that wall curves, smaller bubble's gonna have a higher curvature and it's gonna have more pressure than a larger bubble. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, here's a picture. Here's diameter. This is large bubbles, they're about here. Smaller bubbles, they're about here for this assumed surface tension. So in summary, smaller bubbles have higher pressures in them than larger bubbles. Henry's Law is another very important equation that helps describe what's going on. What Henry's Law says is that a given pressure, a certain amount of gas wants to dissolve in a liquid. And if you've ever seen a carbonated beverage, then you have seen Henry's Law in action. When you open it up and you decrease the pressure, the gas that was dissolved, the carbon dioxide, comes out. You've decreased the pressure, the gas that's dissolved is coming out. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Henry's Law. So what this means, these smaller bubbles have higher pressures in them, and these larger bubbles have lower pressure. And as you start to increase the pressure inside that bottle, or inside the super air meter, the bubbles start to get smaller. And the pressure in the small one is even higher than the larger one. And as you increase the pressure more, it dissolves. It goes away. That's what Henry's Law says. At a certain pressure, the smaller bubbles will dissolve. So to learn more about this, we started to do more experiments. We went back to our same bottle setup and we put air and train cement paste in there just like we did before, but now we ran additional experiments where we took a picture every five PSI from atmospheric pressure up to 35 PSI. 
Here's the overall result. The images on the left have high spacing factors. The bubbles are kind of far apart. And as you increase the pressure up to 35 PSI, notice some of them are gone. They dissolved. And when I re returned it back to atmospheric pressure, they didn't come back, at least not immediately. But over here, where these bubbles are close, where they're all close and spaced very, very close together, as you increase the pressure, some of the bubbles dissolve, but a lot of them are still around. When you decrease the pressure back to atmospheric pressure, there's a whole bunch of them. Let's compare this image to the top one. They're different, but they're more similar than the image on the left. That is a huge clue. Let's show what these bubbles look like where we just track specific bubbles and how they change with pressure. So notice we've lined up bubbles that started out having about the same size. This is bubble diameter over here. And this is applied pressure over here. And in the system with high spacing factor, that's far apart, bubbles far apart. We noticed we increase the pressure, we increase the pressure, and then all of a sudden they get smaller and smaller, and then they dissolve. But the bubbles that are close together behave differently. The ones that are close together, as you increase the pressure, even though they started out being the exact same size, as you increase and go to the same pressures, the ones with the low close space bubbles, they're not getting small very fast. They're taking their time and they don't dissolve. And when you decrease the pressure, they come back. Are they exactly the same? Pretty close. And this happens in larger size bubbles. This happens in smaller size bubbles. This is a pretty important phenomenon. So in summary, the bubbles and the high spacing factor, that's the bubbles far apart, almost entirely dissolved and don't come back. And the bubbles and the low spacing factor, the bubbles close together, they do not dissolve as much under the same exact pressures. So as the bubbles dissolve, as they dissolve, the they locally increase the amount of dissolved air. And so this localized increase in this dissolved air that makes these bubbles not want to dissolve in the same way. And if the bubbles are far apart, then as you increase the pressure, this localized saturation doesn't get a chance to happen. The bubbles just dissolve just like you'd expect they would. We're gonna explain this in terms of the super air meter test and how it works, because it takes advantage of the physics of what I just explained to you. And in the test, we have pressure shown here and we have time. And if you know much about the test, you increase the pressure on the concrete once, then you decrease the pressure, and then you increase it again. I like to think of it as punching the concrete twice. <laughs> The left is the first pressure, and the right is the second pressure. And if you remember or recall, the way the super air meter number works, the way the test works, is it measures the numerical difference between these two pressures. So if these two pressures are close together, that means we have a low spacing factor. If these two numbers are far apart, that means we have a high spacing factor. So let's think of this in terms of punching. So if you have a high spacing factor, bubbles far apart, and you punch it the first time, you knock the bubbles out. They're not there anymore. They've dissolved. And so when you come back and punch them the second time, concrete doesn't respond the same. Those bubbles aren't there anymore to resist the punch. They're gone. The cushion of the bubbles, the squishiness of the bubbles isn't there anymore. So when you punch it the second time, they're not there, and there's a big difference in the pressures. And that's why we have a high SAM number, and that's why a high SAM number means bubbles spaced far apart. But let's say we talk about bubbles that are close together. Very, very, very close. Low spacing factor. When we punch it the first time, the bubbles compress and they come back. Remember, they're close together, 
super saturation around them. They don't dissolve. So when you punch it the second time, a lot of them, most of them, are still there. And the pressure difference between the first and the second is pretty close together. And that's why a low SAM number, a low difference in pressures, equals a closely spaced bubble system. So after we figured these physics out, we basically did a ton of concrete mixtures, hundreds and hundreds of them, and correlated that to the spacing factor. And here's some of the data right here. For 227 different concrete mixtures from two different labs, my group at Oklahoma State and also the US Department of Transportation. And on the x-axis, we're showing SAM number. And on the y-axis, we're showing spacing factor. Spacing factor is a measurement of how close these bubbles are to one another. And when the spacing factor is low, the SAM number is low. And when the spacing factor is high, the SAM number is high. And this 0.008 is kind of a magical, mystical number that people way smarter than, than, than me figured out was a good number to recommend when you look at freeze-thaw durability. And we've shown through a lot of analysis that a SAM number of 0.20 does a good job of correlating with the spacing factor of 008. What does this mean? When your SAM number is less than 0.20, your bubbles are close together. You have a low spacing factor. Your spacing factor is less than 008. When your SAM number is greater than 0.20, it means your bubbles are far apart means your spacing factor is higher. And that's the physics of the super air meter. You can find more information at ashtotp118 and also at superairmeter.com. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this video. I love making them. I love interacting with you. Please give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And let me know what you think. Take care, everybody. Bye.